Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Eng130 video tutorial. Now in this week's tutorials, we'll be discussing the concept of force reduction. And what that basically is, is when we have a body with a lot of forces on it, say five or six forces, what we can do with those forces is convert them into one single force and a single moment. And as you guys know, since forces are dependent, uh, sorry, moments are dependent on force times distance, we can also take that single result in force that we find and move it around to create specific moments. So that's kind of uh, the basis of this week is taking already kind of things that we know and just uh, modifying them to kind of make situations in life a little bit easier. For example, a building has tons of forces on it. There's force due to, let's say, your chair that you're sitting and then desk that you're at, stuff like that. But what we can do is convert them all into one force to make the analysis much easier. And we're going to start very simple. And with this topic, we're going to talk about moment couples. Now, moment couples are uh, very special because they allow you to save a lot of time on exams. Professors love to throw these on exams because if you don't know what you're doing, you'll still be able to solve it using what you know in the, in the past. But if you know the tricks of a moment couple, then you can solve these questions a lot faster. And again, in the midterm, that's what you want. You want to solve things really, really quickly. So with that being said, uh, let's get into moment couples and uh, let's begin. All right, so looking at this example, it wants us to express the moment of the couple acting on the rod in Cartesian vector form. And it also says, what is the magnitude of the couple moment? So let's just highlight the magnitude of the couple moment. So before we begin this example, let's just take a, a little bit of a step back and discuss what exactly is a couple. Now, a couple, it's very, very, very nice and very, very common on exams because like I said, it's a great way to see if you know what it is. And if you know what it is, great. You're going to save a lot of time. You can get the question done quick. If you don't, well, let's be honest. Moments aren't that hard. We can still figure out what it is. It's just going to take us some more time. So uh, before we get into this 3D case up here, let's just go to a 2D case just to kind of really show what a moment couple is. So what a moment couple is, is when we have two forces. And let's just do them in a different color just to make this a little bit more fun. So we're going to have two forces. Now a moment couple has some very specific features about these two forces that act on a body. One, these forces must be parallel to each other. So if we look at these forces, they're both parallel to each other. If I were to erase this one force real quick and have a second force that goes like this, those will not be a moment couple. They need to be parallel to each other. And the reason why will be explained uh, kind of shortly. But let's go back real quick. Let's draw our next uh, parallel. So they have to be parallel. And then the second thing is they have to be the same magnitude. Same magnitude, opposite direction. So if we look at these two forces, and let's say that one of them is 5 kilonewtons, in order for this to be a proper moment couple, this must also be 5 kilonewtons. And if we look at the direction of these forces, they're going in opposite directions. Now that's very, very, very important. They have to be going opposite directions, have to have equal magnitude, and of course they have to be parallel to each other. And the reason why is because as you guys know, when we're finding the moment of a force, we need a distance, a perpendicular distance. So if these are parallel to each other, that distance D is gonna be that perpendicular distance or the distance between the two forces. And what's nice is that I'm trying to find the moment couple of these two forces all it's going to be is one of the forces times the distance between the two forces. So in this case, it's equal to 5 times d. So it's equal to, let's say, just 5d for now. 5d and then kilonewtons, or times meters, millimeters, whatever it may be. But in one simple calculation, you can take into account two forces, which is really nice. And this is why professors love it, is because one equation gets you two moments, basically. If you wanted to, you can take the moments about a point, arbitrary point. Now let's just call this point A all the way over there. But the, the interesting thing is if you take the mo some of the moments at A, you're also going to get the 5 times D. That's the nice thing about a moment couple is it doesn't matter where it acts on a, a body. That moment couple doesn't matter where it acts on a body. It'll always produce the exact same moment. So that's the beauty of a moment couple. So when you see two forces that kind of go in opposite directions, look parallel to each other, and then the same magnitude, that's when you have to tell yourself, okay, I'm pretty sure that this is a moment couple. Again, professors love it. 
Love it, love it, love it. Saves a lot of time because the best thing that they can do in uh, in midterm is just, you know, to be honest, is overwhelm you. How do you do that? Well, you put a lot of forces on. You guys are really smart. You guys know what you're doing. When you go into that midterm, if you guys were just calm and 100% relaxed, I think everyone would do great. I think one of the worst things about the midterm is just your nerves get to you. Your nerves get to you. You get in there. You're stressed. You're nervous. So it takes you a little while to kind of settle in. And when you open up that first page and you're given some uh, weird uh, rigid body and it has six or seven forces on it and it asks you to find the result in the moment, well, then you start to get stressed because you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have to do this seven times. But if you realize that, hey, maybe three of those forces are couples, well, then that takes the work and divides it by two. So it takes away a lot of time. It's about knowing kind of your stuff. Now in 3D, it's a little bit more complicated, so I'm just going to get rid of this equation real quick, but I'll keep uh, the moment in 2D. So what you want to do for 3D is if we have two vectors in 3D space, the same principles apply. They have to be parallel to each other, but the only real distance is, is that distance between them that might be a little harder to find. So it's finding that distance, and what this is going to be, this is going to be a position vector instead of just a regular distance. And remember that these forces have to have the exact same magnitudes. So for example, if the force up here was just say 2i plus 3j minus 2k, well this one will have to be the opposite direction. So negative f is going to be negative 2i minus 3j plus 2k. And then what we're going to want to do is take a position vector between the two forces. Now, here's the only thing you're going to have to really remember. This is the only thing that gets you about moments in 3D because, as I said, moments are, uh, sorry, moment couples, they're nice, they're simple, so it's not meant to be hard. The thing that, only thing that you're going to have to realize is figure out which way you take the moment vector. So if I have two points, A and B, you're going to have to figure out if you go from A to B or B to A. Now, the nice thing about this is if I were to go, let's say, it depends on which force you're, you're taking. So let's say that I want to use this force in my moment calculation. So as you guys remember, the moment is equal to R cross F. And remember, this position vector in that formula, R, goes from the point which you want to take the moment about to the force that you want to use for the moment. So if we're using that force there, well, then we know that we're taking the moment about B and going to A. And this force will be the force has to do with point A. But however, this is going to be equal to the position vector of A to B. So we can go the opposite way and we can go cross and then this one will be the negative F. So you can do that either way. Uh, it really depends which one you guys want. So as long as you're picking the right one, you guys will be good to go. So I'm just going to erase this real quick and we're going to go up and we're going to start the question because the best way to really learn this is just uh, an example. So let's just go up and check the question. So as it said, we want to find the moment couple. Uh, but if you even weren't uh, given the words moment couple in this, you should know it's a moment couple just by looking at the forces. So the distance doesn't really matter. It's the magnitude of those forces because has to do with position vectors so if they're just opposite in sign we know that they're going to be parallel so looking at the force up here we got 4i minus 3j plus 4k and if we look down here we see it's the exact opposite at the top one we have 4i at the bottom one we have negative 4i at the top we have negative 3j at the bottom we have 3j and at the top we have plus 4k and the bottom we have minus 4k so that's your hint right there we have a moment couple. So in this case, to find the moment created by these two things, all we have to do is pick two points, one on each of the forces. So we have point A up here and we have point B down here. And the only thing we have to do is create a position vector between the two forces. So we can go either way. We can go A to B or B to A. And which one you pick will depend on which force you want to use. So in my equations, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this positive force, this positive F at the bottom. So if that's the force I'm using, I have to go from A to B. 
So my position vector is going to go this way. So this one's going to be R, A, B. So let's go down and we can start figuring out what that is, R, A, B. So let's just switch the pen to black. So if we want position vector R, A, B, we know that that's going to be the coordinates at B minus the coordinates at A. So we know that that's going to be equal to, and if we look in the I direction, what we're going to have is the coordinates of B. Okay, well, that's 3 in the X direction minus the coordinates of A, which we know is 0. So this one's going to be 3 minus 0, and that's in the I direction. And we're going to move on to the J direction. So if we look at coordinates of B, we see that its J coordinate is plus 2. And if we look at A, we see that the it's in the XY plane origin, so we know that the Y component for A is going to be 0. So this one is just going to be 2 minus 0. And that right there is for the J direction. And we finish it off with the K direction. So this is the only one where both of them have uh, different ones, and they're not one of them is not 0. So B, we can easily see that its K, va K value is negative 1. And if we look at A, its K value is plus 1. So what we're going to have is negative 1 minus 1. And that's in the K direction. And these units, uh, sorry, this <laughs> vector has units of meters. And we just get that right from the diagram. Everything's labeled in meters. So what we can do is we can just do the simple math to kind of simplify that force vector. And we're going to get 3i plus 2j minus 2k. And that is units of meters. Now the nice thing, which I like to say about this is, Normally when we're finding position vectors, it's to find a unit vector. So the next step is find the magnitude and then find the unit vector. However, remember the moment formula. So if we're taking the moment about something, it's going to be R cross F. And what's nice is we're just taking R. We don't have to find a unit vector. We don't have to find a magnitude. So at this point in right here, actually, we're kind of able to go to that final step and go and find that moment vector. So remember the moment vector we're going to need that cross product, the cross product. So as I was saying, the first row of the cross product is always going to be I, J, K. Always. Nice and easy. The second row will always be the components of the position vector. And that's easy to remember because if we look at the formula, R comes first. It's R cross F. It is not. So let's just put that right here in red so everyone can kind of remember this in their head. It's not equal to F cross R. This will give you a different answer, so do not do that. So coordinates of our position vector, well we know that that's going to be 3, 2, and negative 2. And then finally we throw in the force vector. So as I was saying, we went from A to B, so we're using that force vector at the bottom, which is negative 4i plus 3j minus 4k. So we got negative 4i plus 3j minus 4k. And we can end the brackets. And then real quick, we can use the fish method, which I discussed in earlier videos. So if you guys are unfamiliar with that, I recommend going back and checking out the fish method. I, I like to think it's kind of helpful, so <laughs> you guys can go check that out. But uh, if you guys are really worried about the cross product, there is a way to get it all just through your formula sheet. So I'll let you guys check that out. But I'm just going to go through this a little bit more quickly because the cross product has already been uh, covered quite in depth. So we know for the i component, it's going to be 2 times negative 4 minus negative 2 times 3. And all of that is the i component. And then we're going to go minus, because it's always minus the j component. For the j component, we're going to have 3 times negative 4 minus negative 2 times negative 4. That's in the J. And we're going to finish it off with the K component. So plus, and for the K, we're going to get 3 times 3 minus 2 times negative 4. And all of that is in the K direction. So we're going to close the brackets. And of course, if we look up here, our force is in kilonewtons, our distance is in meters. So we know that the units for the moment 
is going to be kilonewtons times meters. And then we can just make this a little bit nicer by just doing all the math. Please, in the midterm, do the math. Don't leave it like that. That's asking for trouble, so please don't do that. So what we get is we're going to get a moment vector of negative 2i plus 20j. And it ends off with plus 17k. So these are the moments about the x, y, and z axis, respectively. So if you're ever asked a question after you do this, saying what's the moment about the, uh, let's say the y axis, you know it's going to be 20 kilonewton meters. You just look for that y component. However, if we look at the question right here, we did solve the first part of the question, which is express the moment couple acting on the rod in Cartesian vector form. So this right here is a final answer. So let's just give that a quick box. Why not? Ooh, and that messed up horribly. All right, let's try again. Round two. Perfect. So that's done. But if we look up at the question, there's actually another part to it, which says, what is the magnitude of the couple moment? And we go, okay, well, this is a first. We dealt with moments before, but we never did magnitude. However, we did magnitude already for two other types of vectors, and that is force vectors and position vectors. And if you guys remember, the magnitude is just the square of all the components added together and then square root. So if you guys kind of use your imagination, it's actually going to be the exact same for moments. So we're taking the magnitude of this moment. We're just going to do the same procedure that we would do for a force vector or a position vector. So we're going to go square root, and it's going to be 2 squared plus 20 squared plus 17 squared. And what happens when you throw all that together, you're going to get 26.3, and it's going to have units of kilonewton times meters. And that up, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to restate the final answer. So the magnitude of that moment is equal to 26.3 kilonewtons times meters. So don't forget the mag uh, sorry, don't forget the units. Very, very important to have units, especially in the midterms. That's one thing that they definitely will check. And you will get marks off if you get units. So please, 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 please do not forget units. So if we look up the question, uh, we answered both of the questions, we're good to go. This question is actually done. Not too bad. Not too bad. So remember, these couple moments, they're supposed to be easy. They're supposed to be little tricks kind of to save you time. It's not supposed to be difficult, which is hard to believe because I'll be really honest with you guys. This is one of the harder weeks. This week five, it's, uh, <laughs> it's the week that I personally was uh, dreading <laughs> in a way of making these videos because... Uh, as you guys will see later, this concept of force reduction, I call it like the kill shot. The kill shot because if profs want to drive that midterm average down, they, they go right to force reduction. Force reduction is the key to dropping the midterm average. Uh, this concept of uh, couples, uh, it's very nice. It'll save you time. And so this is nice. This is uh, nice and easy. But... Uh, as you guys will see, force reduction is going to get a little bit more complex. But not worry, we're going to start with the simplest case, which is 2D, and we're going to work our way up to the hardest case, which is a wrench. And a wrench is the absolute worst question you can ever get on a midterm. It is the absolute worst. And you guys will see why. You need absolutely everything you've learned since day one to be able to solve that question. And even I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to solve a wrench again. But uh, sure enough, here I am solving the wrenches again. So I think with that being said, that'll conclude this video. Thank you guys all so much for listening. And I will see you guys in the next video.